Welcome back. Today we are going to make an episode of the historical stock patterns. So in order to understand where a stock will go into the future, you have to understand the historical patterns of that stock. How did it get to where it is at the moment? Where has it been? And so on. And today we're looking at one of the most famous companies in the United States, a comp an uh, United States icon, and that is the Boeing stock. So Boeing um, is one of two uh, producers of uh, commercial aircraft with uh, Airbus. So it's a market, basically a duopoly, uh, where you have two competing companies that um, compete for the commercial market. Um, other than that, uh, Boeing also has a lot of government contracts. They produce, for example, the Apache helicopter, and they also are providers for NASA, for aerospace. So, if we look at Boeing stock historically, so we are in a weekly, weekly uh, um, a time frame, just to basically see uh, as far back as possible. So we have in the uh, beginning of the 1990s and all the way back to, to today. So if we look at the lowest this stock has basically been historically, we can see that the Boeing stock has traded at the lowest point around $25. There about a little bit lower in the, in the beginning of the 90s, but historically around $25, would you say the lowest? If you look at the historical highs for this, comp uh, for this stock, you can see that we have hit it several times in the past. So if we put make a line here, we can see that historically, it's a little bit lower than that. It's around $75, or like that here. The stock for a majority of this period, this entire period, has been in between these two ranges from 25 up to around $75. So there is a period where it basically goes above, but that's also before and just after the financial crisis. So if you look at any stock for exactly this period here, they are all overbought. The market was completely overvalued, overbought, and therefore you would have had to have a correction. So... This is the one instance where basically Boeing stock goes above this line in all of this period, uh, apart from this period here. So the question is, why in the world has Boeing stock behaved like this? Why has it been in this range? Well, it has all to do with the product that Boeing produces. So we're going to discuss the, the commercial um, airplane uh, part of the Boeing um, company. So airplanes, they have to be extremely, extremely safe. If you produce aircraft that crash every, well, 50% of the time or something like that, nobody will buy your airplane, nobody will travel, travel on it and so on. The standard of safety in this industry is absolutely critical in order to get people to travel. And we can make an example. If you have a car crash where a few people die compared to an cra airplane crashing with uh, over 100 people dying, that, uh, the news with a, with a car would probably last one day, maybe, in the local news. If you have an airliner crashing, that will be the main news on every news channel uh, for that day, for that week, for that probably that month, and probably also for several months, depending on whether or not they find the black boxes or, or, or something like that. So it will be everywhere. The amount of bad news an airliner uh, receives or a producer of airliners receives when a plane crashes. It's just catastrophic uh, PR for that company. So they have to build the best of the best. And historically, 
Boeing also built the best aircraft in the world. Until recently, which we'll get to in a, in a moment. So, airplanes are completely over-engineered. And they have to be over-engineered in order to guarantee that safety. And there is a downside to that. And that is that these companies don't have enormous earnings. So there are a few ways that you, there's basically uh, two things that affect the value of a stock. That is good news or bad news. So good news is, for example, if you take the earnings, you have constant increase in your earnings and therefore investors will basically buy your stock because they could expect um, um, an increase in value in the future. So that's the way a stock increases in value. Bad news is basically if the earnings go down constantly and you could expect to lose money and therefore people will start selling. So a stock is basically based on the good news and the bad news of the stock. That affects the demand for the stock, selling and buying of the stock. So um, in order to increase earnings, you can do that in a few ways. You can, or, or I think in many ways, you can cut back on expenditure. You can basically make a product that is just so much better than any other product on the market. For example, the iPhone when it was released. It just has such a comp competitive advantage that it technically destroyed all the other companies that were producing, um, uh, ma making phones like Nokia and Motorola and so on. So earnings, really important. And the other way you can basically increase the value of your stock is basically to buy your own stock. And that is basically what Boeing started doing um in the in, in this in this age here we'll come come back to that in a, in a moment so a company can basically take some of its earnings or most of it and basically buy its own stock and thereby increasing the demand for the stock and they're also increasing the value of the stock or the price of the stock and those two um Two methods or two reasons were the basically the reason why we have this explosion in, in the Boeing stock. So historically, we have a stock that was trading between twenty-five and seventy-five dollars. But when we come to this period here, Boeing has a change in their their uh, leadership. So they go from producing the best of the best aircraft in the world, uh, using a lot of money uh, on uh, research and development, the best equipment and so on, until Wall Street gets involved. And Wall Street does not think about producing the best aircraft in the world. They have one interest, and that is making money. And... The way Wall Street basically makes money is to get the stock to increase as much as technically possible. So, what Boeing started doing in this period here is that they, instead of producing most of their um, airplanes in-house with their own engineers and so on, they started outsourcing in order to cut cost. And they also cut back on expensive uh, materials and, uh, and software. And technically, they just cut as much cost as possible in order to get as high earnings as technically possible. Didn't really work out in the beginning, but in the end, yes, it did work out. Um, but it came at a price, which we'll get to at a moment. So they went from making the best aircraft in the world to basically making aircraft that were less good and that basically basically increases their risk so with this increased earnings and uh, with the profits that basically what they were making they were also buying back 
their stock heavily. And that causes an absolute explosion in Boeing stock. So you just look at this. You have from the period of 2013 to the period of in 2019, an increase of nearly 500%. And everybody that looks at this historically, we have this historical pattern here of a stock trading between $25 to $75, all of a sudden exploding within five to six years to $450 per share. Should ask them ask themselves, what is just what happened? So this is like if something looks too good to be true, it most likely is. And that's also the case here. It's like uh, winning in the lottery without playing. There's there's something wrong here. Uh, did Boeing uh, all of a sudden um, become six times as good company within this uh, period here? Did they, this does this basically make any sense? And uh, well, if you want to make Wall Street happy, then it makes a lot of sense. If you want to make the best of the best aircraft in the world, it makes no sense whatsoever. So we have to look at this period here. So Boeing reaches its high point here in 2019, March 2019, where it hit around $445 per share. And then we have two accidents with the Boeing Max aircraft, which causes this stock to absolutely tumble. We go from 435 all the way down to uh, 360 within a matter of a, a, f a few days, technically. So both Boeing and its competitor, Airbus, have two types of aircraft which are basically their backbone of their of their their fleet and and the airplane in question here is the um, Boeing Max aircraft and we had two malfunctions in this aircraft within a span of I think it's only a few months in between them but they had very specific uh, incidents were were very similar and this caused um, governments and also airliners just to stop using this aircraft because nobody will fly in them if they know that there's something wrong with them. They will basically say, we're not, we're grounding these aircraft, we're not using them until basically we figure out what is wrong with them. And then all of this, all the things that cut uh, the cut in production and basically what Boeing uh, had done in this period came into light. Uh, Boeing went from producing the best aircraft in the world to producing technically junk. Aircraft that were not ready to go into uh, commercial use. And to this day, the MAX aircraft are still grounded. And Boeing are losing billions and billions of dollars uh, because they're not selling any of these aircraft, which are their backbone of their production. And in most cases, uh, uh, Airbus is basically taking uh, over um, this uh, hole that they have created. So people have to understand that before the coronavirus, Boeing stock was already starting to decrease in value because they have so many problems with the uh, MAX aircraft. And um, nobody knows if they are going to fly again. They're still not flying. So it may take a, a long time in order for the, them to resolve these problems. So we get to the period here. We get to the coronavirus period. And I'll change it to the um, daily chart in order to get a more detailed analysis of 
what technically is going on here. So um, we have the coronavirus virus hitting in March or February, and it started hitting cruise liners first, and then airliners, and then restaurant industry, and so on. So uh, of course, uh, fleets were grounded. Uh, producer aircraft were extremely hard hit, not just Boeing, but also Airbus, because they have no orders. People were canceling their, their orders and so on and so on. So we have a stock going from uh, 300 and around 50 all the way down to around $90. This is a decrease of 74% in its value. Absolutely enormous uh, for for a uh, fall for Boeing. However, this is above uh, the the historical trend pattern. So ninety is about uh, it was seventy around around seventy five. So it, I expected Boeing to go down uh, the stock to go down to seventy five when it started falling. I still believe. It will go back down to 75 in, in the long run. I'll get back, I'll get to that in a moment. But um, it made no sense for Boeing to be up here. It's not supposed to be up here um, historically. Um, if they want to produce the same uh, uh, aircraft that they used to do in the past, then this stock will fall. They will not have the amount of money. Um, to buy back their stock and so on if they have to make uh, aircraft that's the same quality. But in the short run, this is a really interesting uh, stock to analyze and also to guess where it's going. Because when we had this fall, we got this bottom here. And um, this bottom here, we, uh, uh, we bought them and then we had an absolutely enormous increase of of uh, of almost a hundred percent we hit the 200 moving uh, exponential exponential moving average and then we fell down again uh, quite drastically and then we just hugged this uh, exponential moving average for quite a long time all the way through April had through May and to uh, half of May before we basically had another explosion to the upside. So we have this uh, double bottom here, and we have basically created a new su uh, support level here. And I'm guessing that this is going to be uh, a major uh, support level to get through. And if we get through it, we will basically retest these lows again and even go lower than that. Um, but when we hit these lows and went up again, we started getting these uh, tops here. And that made it really interesting to, uh, to uh, analyze this as a triangle. And for people that don't know what a triangle is or a descending triangle, usually when stock uh, go down and they go up, they create this kind of triangle here. And... Uh, what happens is that the stock started trading all the way down to this, this corner here. And when it basically reaches this corner, uh, they either explode to the upside or they explode to the downside. That is really, really uh, normal when you have a uh, triangle like this and you basically descend into this corner you basically get stuck in this corner and then you basically just explode to the upside or you explode to the downside in this case we exploded to the upside and we went all the way up to 233 dollars and i must ask uh, uh, this was completely speculation at this point most airlines in the world were not flying at the near their full capacity not even close. Maybe uh, they were fly flying like 30% of their uh, capacity uh, compared to before the coronavirus. So why you should have this explosion here? This was com this was based on the Fed and this was based on retail investors. This is just gambling. This has nothing to do with uh, the fundamentals and the economy. However, when we had this top here, we created another triangle so we can take the top here and the top there and we get 
another triangle. And I think this is going to be quite accurate. We uh, now have a bottom here, a top here, and we started descending again into this corner here. And what I'm guessing is going to happen in the uh, next uh, few weeks is that we are actually going to trend all the way down into this corner and then we'll get an explosion to the upside or we'll get an explosion to the downside. If this support level here is broken, then we will go and test these lows again. There's nothing there that basically is um, in between here. We will basically test this area again. And then we can ask, where will we go? And uh, my answer is, I, or, or my, my guess is that we'll go uh, and test this $75 range, which is the high of, of the uh, historical stock. Uh, of the historical stock. So it used to trade between 25 and uh, 75. And I'm guessing it will go and hit this and then bounce up again. If we go through this, which which would mean that we will go back into this area, this historical area here between 20, $25 and $75, then yeah, yeah, we'll start trading in this area again. If we go up, I don't know why we should go up, because nothing really has changed in the world economy. We still have the coronavirus, and as long as we have the coronavirus, there is the airlines will not be able to uh, fly at full capacity, not even close to what we basically had prior to the coronavirus. And even though we did find a cure, this stock was already decreasing. And the reason why it was decreasing is because we had an absolutely uh, a big bubble there, which exploded because of the uh, Max airplane uh, crisis. And this crisis has not re been resolved yet. So if this stock goes down, I'm guessing it will basically test this level of 75 and then it will bounce. Um, and if it basically goes upwards, then we will basically look at this line here. This is the 200 moving average. And I'm guessing that that will be, play as a, a major resistant level um, if we basically go to the upside here. Um, well, these two moves made no sense. And then I'm just getting a guess. We'll probably get the third. And we'll probably get a third because you will have retail investors buying this and you will have the Fed basically uh, buying everything on the market. Um, however, if you know, countries start um, start uh, closing their uh, economies again, then we'll go much lower. Um, Boeing, of course, is a company that is too big to fail. This is not a company that the U.S. government will ever, ever let... Uh, go bankrupt because it's just too important for national security, for their military, and so on. Uh, however, their stock may have a miserable, miserable time if the uh, United States start, um, closes their economy again, or basically uh, several states starts closing their economy and people cannot fly and so on. So... I hope you enjoyed this analysis. Um, I like looking at historical patterns of stock and uh, analyzing where they basically go into the future and so on. Um, so if you like this video, uh, welcome to subscribe to our channel, hit the like button and uh, push the notification button in order to get our...